Thank you for joining us today. Won't you join us by liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'd appreciate it. Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday School lesson. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I, and I am an associate minister at the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church, located at 6758 South Wabash Avenue in the city of Chicago, Illinois where our pastor is the Reverend Kevin Woods. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, teach me your ways that I might be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and thank God. Our lesson for today is entitled, Jumping for Joy, and our, back, our, our background scripture is Acts chapter 3. The lesson contains Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. And our devotional reading is Luke chapter 10, verse 1 through 9. And our main thought or the memory verse is Acts chapter 3, verse 8. He, and it reads thusly, and he leap, leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. After God formed his church through the power of the Holy Spirit, which was the lesson last week, part of the lesson last week was also part of Acts chapter two. The people along with the disciples, they stayed in Jerusalem celebrating God and the arrival of the Holy Spirit. They had witnessed various miracles, signs and wonders. The church or members of had sold off some of their possessions to provide relief for the poor. And they were meeting daily in the temple, in homes and breaking bread, which indicate not just eating, but celebrating the Lord's Supper. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. And though they had been baptized with the Holy Spirit, they were Jews who continued Jewish practices. One of those was to go to the temple three times a day to pray. They went one time early in the morning when the priest made the daily sacrifice. They went the second time in the mid-afternoon, which is our verse before us, 3 p.m., the sixth hour. And three, the third time they went was sunset, verse one. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, beginning the ninth hour. That's the second time. And 3 p.m., Verse 2, watch what they inquired, encountered. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb, from birth, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple. And this was a Jewish tradition. Those that were not able to care for themselves, it was a responsibility of the Jewish people to care for the poor and the needy. And a man lame from birth, you know, that means one thing. It, it means either something genetic, it had to be something genetic, and it didn't come from an accident because he was lame when he was born. And he had never been, never been able to walk. Though he was lame and looked on as cursed by sin, by some, there was a belief among some of the Jewish people as in the book of John that they asked the man that was born blind. They said, why was he blind? Did his parents sin or did he sin in the womb? 
And okay, so though he was lame and looked on a curse, he had before the, the that put him, he had people that would put him at the beautiful gate. That was the gate on the eastern side of the temple, which was also the busiest of all the gates where he would ask for alms. We call them handouts. So the beautiful gate got had the most traffic so you could get the most alms because more people came through there. And alms was not begging, but it was a duty of those able to give to the poor. If you could, you were supposed to. If you couldn't, God already knew. Those poor and old disabled were daily at the temple asking for alms of all who passed as they did to Peter and John. Verse 3. Who sent Peter and John about to go into the temple after alms? Verse 4 and 5. And Peter fastening his eye upon him with John said, Look on us. That's verse 4. Verse 5. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He, he, Peter paid direct attention to the man and tells the man to pay closer attention. Look on us. He had already saw them in the previous verse and he did expecting to receive something. And though they knew per the law that when they went to the temple, it was custom to give to the needy making them look to others as they had came unprepared. In other words, you were supposed to be prepared to give alms when you came to the temple. Peter announced that he had no money, verse 6. And then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Peter had no money, but he had something far more precious, a healing, not in his name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he tells the men, he, he don't help the man up. He didn't pick him up. He told him to get up and walk. And though this man had never walked from birth, remember, when we children, we have to learn how to walk. So this man been lame since the beginning, since birth. He had no mental knowledge. He's seen other people walk, but he had no mental knowledge or physical remembrance of how to walk. I just told you, I just said don't all of us have to learn how to walk? Animals don't. We do. And Peter took him by the hand, the right hand, which is the hand of honor. Where does Jesus sit? He sits on the right hand of the Father, pleading our case. And his feet and ankles were fully restored. Verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, when God heals you, it don't take overnight. It's done immediately. His feet and ankle bones receive strength. He was fully restored. And we have to, I have to keep telling the point that this man had never walked from birth. Because to get the really meaning of what God is telling us in this lesson, you got to keep going back to that. Verse 8, the memory verse, main thought. And he leaped up, he leaping up. He didn't stand up. He leaped up and stood on his feet and walked immediately and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praying. It's like he's been doing this all the time. This is the first day in his life he has stood on his feet. And 
but standing going into the temple praising God. When God heals, it's immediate and complete. He went to praise God for, he could have ran home and told his family. He could have ran down the street and say, look at me, look at me. Instead, he went into the temple and praised God because he knew that it had to be God that healed him after all these years. Verse 9 and 10. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonders and amazement at that which had happened unto him. The, you know, the people came to the temple on a regular basis. So they knew all the people that was at the beautiful gate asking for alms. Now he walking and he leaping. And he filled, he, he filled with the Spirit, praising God. And they are filled with wonder and amazement because this could only have been done by God. The man kept Peter and John and all that witnessed it. They came together in Solomon's Port. That was located on the east side of the largest court of the temple. It covered about 50, it was about 50 feet wide and approximately 100 to 150 feet long. They call it Solomon Porch. It's mentioned a number of times throughout the Bible, well, throughout the New Testament. Verse 11. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon greatly wondering. And if we come to the close of this lesson, jumping for joy. Hmm. Every day you wake up, if you know Jesus, you ought to jump for joy. As followers of Jesus Christ, we ought to show compassion and respect to all people, but pay special attention to those with physical or mental disabilities, or both. Though in Jesus' time, it was believed that the parents or unborn child had sent, John chapter 9, verses 1 through 2. But as told in John chapter 9, verse 3, it, was, it wasn't about his parents sinning or about him sinning in the womb. It was allowed to happen to glorify God. And sometimes we have some issues in our life that only God can solve. And when he do, with what we've been through individually through this issue, we know it couldn't have been nothing but God. So every time something happened, it's not because of sin. In our lesson today, though the man was healed physically, that's a miracle. But the greatest blessing what he was also healed spiritually. That's why he didn't go home and brag. That's why he ran into the temple leaping and walking with Peter and, and John praising the name of the Lord. And whether God does something today for you or not, we still for the praise of the Lord because he already done all that we need to get from earth to heaven. And just as Jesus ministered through Peter and John, we have to also minister to those with disabilities. Matthew 14 and 14, Matthew 15 and 32, Mark 8 and 2, and have compassion through the power of the Holy Spirit. We, Because we as humans, we're not compassionate. Because sin has nothing to, sin as sinners, there is no compassion. But through God and the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have compassion. And we can help those physically, mentally, find whatever it is, we can help them while sharing the gospel for spiritual healing.
And again, we thank you for being a part of our Sunday school lesson on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Kevin Wilkes and the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church family. We thank you. God bless and God keep us all. Amen. Thank God. Thank you for joining us today. We hope and pray that this Sunday school lesson has made you want to learn just a little bit more about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why don't you join us for our Sunday school at 10 o'clock, morning worship at 1130. We look forward to seeing you there. Until then, tell somebody you love them.